All right, let's take a look at uh, chapter 10, problem two, which is 10.4 from the text. So your company faxed you some results shown below for the system hydrogen methane. Use these data to answer the following questions. Okay, so let's start with uh, A and we'll work our way down. So because the fax machine malfunctioned, some entries were missing. Supply the missing numbers and explain your calculations. Okay, so A is essentially uh, fill in the rest of this table. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So we have a binary system of hydrogen methane. Uh, let's see, so row one, so pressure of 0 0.074 bars, temperature seven or 250 Kelvin. So X1 and Y1 are both zero. So this would correspond to a system of pure component two, pure methane. And then we're given fugacity coefficient of component one in the liquid and component one in the vapor phase. And then we're given fugacity coefficient of component two in the liquid and two in the vapor along with uh, compressibility of the vapor and compressibility of the liquid. So the first thing that I notice is this first row uh, would correspond to pure component two, right? So X2 is equal to Y2 is equal to one. And then I'll notice that V2 and liquid V2 and vapor are the same, right? These two fugacity coefficients here, okay, are the same. All right, let me underline it, okay? So what this tells me then is, you know, if I were to multiply that by uh, mole fraction and pressure, or I get fugacity, right? Um, so this is telling me that I have pure methane in uh, vapor liquid coexistence uh, in row one, okay? Then if I look at row two, pressure of 6.148 bars, temperature is 250 Kelvin, uh, X2 is 0.2, Y1 is 0.9876. Then we're given V1V, uh, V2L, along with ZV and ZL. Okay, and so you know, the thing that stands out to me here is that I have um, you know, X1 is 0.2 and Y1 is 0.9876. So this is gonna suggest to me that I have a two phase coexistence, right? That um, I have a, a liquid and vapor phase uh, at coexistence. Okay, cool. So then let's see what we could do in terms of uh, filling in uh, the rest of the table. Okay, so if I look at what I have, all right, so let me tackle V1L first, okay? How I think I'm gonna tackle V1L is if I have a two-phase coexistence, okay? So binary system at two-phase coexistence, then the fugacity of component one in the liquid has to be equal to the fugacity of component one in the vapor. And since I'm given the fugacity coefficient um, in, of component one in both phases, and I know uh, pressure, which is the same in both phases in composition, uh, then I can calculate this. All right, so namely, I have that fugacity of component one in the liquid is equal to the fugacity of component one in the vapor. Okay, this liquid phase fugacity I could expand out as V1 liquid times um, X1 times P is gonna be equal to V1 vapor times Y1 times P. Okay, pressure in the two phases are the same. So if I'm trying to solve for V1L then, I find that V1L is equal to y1 over x1 times v1v, okay? Cool, so I use my isofugacity equation, okay? If I look at the other missing entry, okay, my other missing entry is v2v, okay? Uh, but again, I know v2l, and then I also know uh, essentially x2 and y2, and so that would allow me to solve for v2v via my isofugacity equation. So for component two, I'd have the F2 in liquid is equal to F2 in vapor. Expand that out, I have V2 liquid. Well, yeah, V2 liquid times X2 times P is equal to V2 vapor times Y2 times P. Pressure's the same, I'm gonna kill it. So if I'm solving for, in this case, V2 vapor, V2 vapor will be equal to X2 over Y2 times V2L, okay? And just for completeness, um, I'm gonna run out of space, but X2 is just one minus X1, Y2 is one minus Y1 times V2L, okay? So I can solve for my two fugacity coefficients. Bam, okay? Um, excellent. So that is, is A, okay? Um, 
Yes, a couple things to point out as I notice it. So, you know, feed to vapor. Remember, it's going to be uh, the vapor phase is going to have the compressibility, um, the larger compressibility, the one closer to one. Um, and so I see that here, right? Liquid phase has a compressibility that's really small. Um, something else that's interesting is so here would be my limiting fugacity coefficients, essentially my fugacity coefficients of component one at infinite dilution, right? Because it's uh, the pure component um, two limit. And what I see is, you know, phi one liquid is large, right? It's huge. While phi one vapor is close to one uh, at this low pressure. Remember, fugacity coefficient of one would correspond to an ideal gas, all right? So, uh, liquid phase is very non-ideal. Okay, but all right. So if you look at B, what's the saturation pressure of methane at 250 Kelvin, right? So to answer this, okay, remember we pointed out that row one corresponds to pure component two, which is methane at vapor liquid coexistence at, in this case, 250 Kelvin. We knew that because I have um, X2 equals Y, you know, yeah, X2 equals Y2 is one. And then we see that the fugacity coefficients of component two in the two phases are equal. And so hence uh, the fugacity of component two in the two phases would be the same. So the vapor pressure, right, in B would just be this 0 0.074 bars, right? That would be B, the saturation pressure of uh, pure methane. Okay, cool. We're crushing through this. C, calculate the fugacity. Okay, so maybe let me label this as, as A. Okay, because then C is calculate the fugacity of saturated liquid methane at 250 Kelvin. Okay, so again, this first row corresponds that corresponds to methane, um, pure component methane at vapor liquid coexistence, right? So at uh, 250 Kelvin, that was PSAP, okay? All right, so, you know, so for B, we found that P2SAP was just 0 0.074 bars, okay? So then in C, if I want F2SAP, okay, we're looking at a system of pure methane, Okay, so that's just going to be um, V2 sap times P sap, right? I don't need uh, X2 or uh, Y2 because they're just both one. Okay, and then, you know, V2 sap, if I go up here, again, fugacity coefficient of liquid and vapor is, is just the same. So this would just be 0 0.9953 times our 0 0.074 bars, right? And that would give me the fugacity in bars. Okay, cool. All right, we're cruising through this one. So, this so far, it seems like just knowledge of our definition of fugacity. Okay, uh, D. Okay, this just looks like problem one. Calculate the fugacity of methane at 250 Kelvin, 300 bars. Okay, you can assume the molar volume is um, constant. Okay, so I have. So at saturation, so I've I calculated F sat at 250 Kelvin. Okay, so now I'm at the same temperature, but a higher pressure. I have a compressed liquid. Okay, so what this screams to me is pointing correction. Okay, and so to see that in all its glory, you should look at the screencast for problem one. But essentially, we would just have F sat times the exponential of. Um, V over RT times uh, P minus P sap, right? So you should look at the, the last screencast for completeness, okay? But essentially, we would just have that fugacity of component two in this compressed phase is the fugacity of component two at saturation times the exponential of, so this would be V2 over RT times P minus P sat, right? So I remember it's P minus P sat because P is gonna be greater than P sat so that this term is uh, positive, okay? Cool, all right, so that would be uh, D. Oh, then the only trick is I need a molar volume, right? How am I gonna get molar volume? Well, so I know this is gonna be a compressed liquid, right? And so the key is here, when we assume that the molar volume is constant, so our molar volume of our compressed liquid uh, could be assumed to be equal to the molar volume of component two um, of our liquid phase at saturation. Okay, so we're given ZL. Okay, so we have ZL, we have P, and we have T. 
Remember our um, equation of state for real fluids is just that PV is equal to ZRT. So if I want to solve for V, okay, of my liquid at saturation, okay, so let's do liquid at saturation, it'd be Z of my liquid at saturation times RT over P, right? Where I know RT and P. So I can get VL sat, okay? The units of this are going to be given by uh, the units of RT and P. So if, say, these were in SI units, you'd get this in, um, what do you call it, um, um, meters cubed per mole. Okay? But actually, I guess maybe this, you don't have to quite do all that because I could plug it in here and simplify a little bit, right? Because if I had, um, oops, let me I'll even put the 2 on there, right? But it's just from the first row. Because then if I had, um, if I plug in for V2C over RT, um, so if I plug in that that is Z2 RT over P, um, and then that's divided by RT, I can kill the RT term, right? So then um, I only have to worry about units as long as my pressures are in the same units. And then here, that's just P, right? Those will be in the same units, all right? Cool. So D is pointing correction. Uh, the only extra wrinkle here is I need to calculate molar volume using equation of state of real fluids uh, with the information provided. Um, e, so a solution with the composition X1.2, right? What do you know that's X1.2? Is it be stored at 250 Kelvin? Right, this data is at 250 Kelvin. It's important to avoid the formation of uh, vapor. What is the minimum pressure required? Okay. So, you know, for this, what I need, and actually does ask for pressure. It says, what's the minimum pressure? Okay. So if I want to know what the minimum pressure is, and we're told what the temperature is, okay, what comes to mind for me is a TXY phase diagram. Or not a TXY, a PXY. I'm thinking about a PXY, a PXY phase diagram where the temperature is fixed and equal to 250 Kelvin. Okay, And so now uh, PXY, so if component one is the most volatile component, <clears throat> component one then okay, will have the larger pure component vapor pressure. Okay. So if I were to assume this were an ideal system, I'll have a straight bubble line, okay? And my ability to just draw a straight line is apparently even worse on the on this pad than it is on the board. Okay. And then I'll draw my, my curve there for my phase envelope. Okay. So um, high pressures correspond to liquids. Okay. So now the idea is we have a liquid of 0.2 mole fracs. And we want to make sure that uh, vapor phase doesn't form. Okay, so it wants to know what's the uh, minimum uh, pressure, right? And make just make sure I'm on the right page. So uh, liquid that's 0.2 mole fracs, and we want to avoid the formation of a vapor. So what's the minimum pressure, right? So the idea would be is if I were to decrease the pressure, I'm going to have a liquid until I hit my bubble line. Okay. So then at my bubble line, right, now I have, in theory, a system at two-phase coexistence where I have this liquid in equilibrium with this vapor, okay? So my what's unique about my uh, bubble point of that mixture is that's the point where the first vapor bubble forms, okay? And it's a theoretical limit because at my bubble point, Z is just equal to X. So everything is still um, liquid, right? Um, so I'm not actually, you know, producing any vapor. So if I want to know what the minimum um, pressure would be, that would correspond to the bubble point pressure for that mixture. Okay. And so, you know, it's kind of a little misleading because they get tell you X1 of the problem statement, but what it really is, is essentially it's, it's Z1, right? And so at the, the bubble point, uh, X1 is equal to Z1 is equal to 0.2. And so then if I look up the table for the information provided, all right, so if I have a mixture, a liquid mixture of uh, composition Z1 is 0.2, you know, X1 equals 0.2, right? So the bubble point of that mixture, X1 is equal to Z1. 
I could read off the bubble point pressure, which would be 6.148. Okay, so in um, E then, you know, um, what's the minimum pressure required, right? So the minimum pressure is going to be 6.148, right? Because as long as I keep the pressure above 6.148, okay, so if I were to read this all the way over, this is going to be 6.148 bars, right? So as long as I keep the pressure of that mixture uh, above 0.6 or 6.148 bars, I'm going to have a, a liquid. Okay, cool. So that is um, that's E. Okay, so let me label that. Now let's just look at the last one, F. Okay, so F is calculate the volume of the tank needed to store a saturated liquid mixture of the two components with composition X1 equals 0 0.2 at 250 Kelvin. Report the results in cubic meters per million of moles. All right, so calculate the volume of the tank needed to store a saturated liquid mixture of the two components with composition X1 equals 0 0.2 at 250 Kelvin. Okay, so how would I how, how I would interpret this is when it says saturated liquid mixture is I'm going to assume that I have essentially a mixture at my bubble point, right? Because that would correspond to a saturated mixture. It's just in theory, uh, it's not in equilibrium with any vapor, okay? So how I would interpret this is that I am going to have uh, my mixture here, okay? It's going to be a liquid mixture at my bubble point, okay? Where we're given ZV, and so I can calculate V using my equation of state uh, for uh, real fluids. Okay, so how I would interpret this, okay, is, okay, uh, I'm going to assume I have a liquid mixture at my bubble point, right? Which, or which, are the bubble at the bubble point of the mixture, I would have a saturated liquid, and so how I would interpret this is my equation of state of real fluids is PV is equal to ZR. T, okay. So if I'm going to have a liquid, okay, what I'm interested in calculating is the molar volume of that liquid, right? So VL would be equal to ZL uh, times RT over P, and then it's just a matter of playing with the units, right? So for example, if I were to use SI units for RT and P, L is going to be in terms of meters cubed per mole, right? The units they ask for is cubic meters per million of moles, okay? So if I use SI units, I get meters per mole. How many meters would there be, you know, in a million moles? Well, I guess I'd multiply that by one million, right? And that'd give me uh, volume per million moles, okay? Cool, but that is uh, problem two.